Hello people, it's Cole. Today we'll be flipping through the Playmobil catalog. This catalog is from 1990. It's focused entirely on the Victorian mansion. This catalog is very unique in that it's following sort of a storyline of one specific character, Vicky. Victorian Vicky. Her diary is included in this catalog and we'll get to read that. We'll find out all about her her rich girl secrets. <laughs> I'm here for you every week with a vintage magazine flip through. So stay right here with me and let's get started. Okay, so on the cover, well, it's a, it's very minimalist as far as text goes. Playmobil 90, that's it. But we have a nice little zoomed in vignette of the dollhouse uh, balcony. So an outdoor little seating situation with some a punch bowl and three children, including Vicky herself, Vicky Victorian Vicky of the diary fame, you'll see. She's right here with her dead white doll. Some other classic Victorian era toy items uh, like hoop, hoop and stick, you know, so fun, hours of fun. There's a orange cat and a parrot, as well as two adult women. This seems to be the housekeeper, perhaps, and perhaps this one over here is the governess. We're talking about rich girls here. They have governesses. Yes, indeed. And then if we pan up, look who's being a helicopter parent right out the window, out the dormer up here. Somebody, maybe mom, with a very wealthy looking feathered hat and a pink <laughs> like fur stole she's leaning out the window and watching and taking notes probably and that's it nice and simple very beautiful with a soft pink gradient sky let's open it up okay oh my god all right so Firstly, I suppose, let's read. Read this text up here. This is a short catalog, and it is it is really like a narrative, so I think it's important that I do read everything that's written, but you're going to be fascinated by this, <laughs> this story, so so don't you worry. You just sit back and, and listen up. Vicky's Adventure. Vicky, a little girl from a good home. Rich lived during the turn of the century. This is when there were still grand townhouses, horse-drawn vehicles, horsemen, full-dressed guards, hand carts, and a lot of bicycles filled the streets. There were also a few real automobiles. However, they <laughs> made terrible noise and smelled and smoked badly. Vicky's family belonged to high society because after all, her father was the Chancellor of Commerce. Naturally, you can understand that Vicky should be raised by a governess. We saw her on the cover. Charlotte, that was the governess's name, was also supposed to teach her to speak French. So now we have an idea of what's going on here. Here's the dollhouse exterior. Busy, busy street this house is on. We have horse-drawn carriages, as well as a truck. So we're sort of in a turn-of-the-century transitional time, of course, uh, between... It's the Industrial Revolution. Get with it. There's uh, some kind of... I don't know what this is, like a... Some kind of booth of some type that has, like, posters for era-specific products on it, which is really fun. There's baby, you know, a woman pushing a baby carriage. There's someone riding a tricycle <laughs> with like a straw boater hat. I don't know if you can tell. There's some very subtle paper, like cut paper trees that are almost the same color as the pink sky, which is like a very, very slight background scene setting technique, which I think is fabulous. A little practical paper set. Vicky's adventures first really began when Charlotte arrived and they moved into the big new townhouse, Vicky's Castle. 
She is so spoiled. <laughs> but that's enough for now. You can read more about how the story goes in booklet number one out of Vicky's diary. So buckle up for this because you're going to freak when you see this diary. Uh, but on this page, we're moving. It's moving day. There's two identical houses. I guess the street is lined with townhouses, so they're all the same. And we're moving in. You know, we have some mustached men carrying in some heavy furniture. This is the Victorian parlor set, which I had and still have um, from, from probably from 1990. I very distinctly remember the texture, this rubber, dense rubber texture of the upholstery on this was different than the plastic texture of the wood framing on the furniture, which was a nice touch. And the seats, the rubber seats, like snap into the plastic wood chair frame. As we move down the street, there's, you know, some very fancy men in fancy pink and purple hats. There's a lady of a certain age with some silver metallic, like, printed on silver glasses, and a, she's waving a parasol menacingly. Um, another vehicle down here, some neighborhood children, two identical boys <laughs> right here on a, on a fence. So everyone's come out. This neighborhood is like gossip city. Everyone's come out to watch these neighbors move in. Like there's a creepy creep guy looking through a window next door in this Perv <laughs> up here on this balcony. <laughs> Her too. The slow day, I guess. They're all obsessed with Vicky. So get into this. It's a little inserted diary book. Vicky's diary book, number one, which implies there's more than one of these. I don't know. Maybe there are other versions, like other books in other catalogs as years progress, which would be fascinating to try to find, but Vicky, Vicky's diary book, number one, we're moving, there's Vicky, we're moving all of our junk into this house, and it's just like a little clipped in, stapled by one staple, kind of mini magazine in the magazine. I love this. This is fascinating. <laughs> Also, in the background of this, you know, we have a very extreme close-up of a children's bedroom here. You can see it like that. Bunk beds, lots of kids. There's Vicky with her dead white doll. We have felt curtains, and there's like a baby bassinet, and there's the creepy governess, <laughs> Miss, Miss Charlotte, who may or may not know French, stuck out on the balcony lovely blue floral and leaf printed wallpaper. It's unusual to see this extreme of a close-up, especially of like an interior space, like an interior room in a dollhouse. I don't know if I've ever seen that in a Playmobil catalog before actually, so that's pretty cool, quite special. Okay, so now we're gonna dig into this diary and I'm going to read you all of Vicky's <laughs> innermost private thoughts. Whoa. <laughs> so, uh, so that's me. It's me and you. We're reading this together. Dear children, while well, my brother and I were cleaning out some junk up in our attic, we made a fantastic discovery. Just imagine, we found our great, great grandmother's diary in an old dusty chest. Her name was Vicky, actually Victoria. There were a lot of other old things in the chest, such as strange clothes, a gramophone, and many old yellowed pictures. Ever since then, we have been trying to imagine what it was like in those olden days. We are imagining Vicky's adventures in life and playing with Playmobil 1900. This is because the 1900 figures, furniture, and house all look like the ones in the old pho photographs. I name you Vicky, and you're Peter, her best friend who even saved her life once, and dot, dot, dot. <laughs> but now let's read a part of Vicky's diary. Okay, interesting. So it's a bit, it's a bit of a multi-layered story, story within a story. This girl, who's referring to us as children, is sort of like fantasizing the visuals of Vicky's diary through these dolls. 
okay, a little added layer of complexity to this. In fact, this letter is like overlaid on top of and has a different color to it than the rest of the diary. So we, we are to understand that this is separate information. <laughs> okay, first entry to the diary. Get ready. September 13, 1903. Now finally, dear diary, I have time to spend with you. Boy, what a mix-up these last few days have been. Since you must know, we moved. It's a new huge house and I met Peter. We've only seen each other a few times, but he's already my best friend. He also saved my life. But one thing at a time. They're really teasing out this <laughs> near-death experience. The whole night before we moved, I was so excited I couldn't sleep a wink. When Mademoiselle Charlotte, my nanny, came to wake me in the morning, I was already sitting on my bed fully dressed in her white ruff and her big huge hat with a bow on it. She slapped her hands together in front of her face and yelled at me in French? I didn't understand one word. She's my nanny. She's supposed to teach me to speak French and how to behave properly. Oh, like finishing school. But even she sometimes acts like a silly nanny. Why did she freak out about Vicky being already dressed? That seems like that would be a good thing that would help her. I guess because she did something like out of turn without asking or something. I don't think Charlotte's going to last very long in this <laughs> employment scenario if she can't get a grip. I just ran out of my room and into the kitchen where Elsa has already put toast and jelly and some chocolate milk on the table for me. They have a cook. Another household employee. Elsa is our cook. She is... <laughs> she was terribly upset. Moving men had entered the kitchen and poured her boiling water over the coal stove to put out the cooking fire? A filthy black puddle of water was spreading on the floor. This is a mixed up moving day. Vicky wasn't kidding. Excuse me, madam, one of the moving men said. We have instructions to disconnect the coal stove and load it into our moving van. Elsa gasped for air. The tea water, she yelled. What am I going to serve Madame and Mr. Smith for breakfast? <laughs> Things went wrong the entire day. There were mix-ups everywhere. Madame and Mr. Smith, they are my parents. I used to call them mom and dad, but since father was promoted to counselor of commerce, I must say ma'am and sir. Wow, this is like kind of interesting. You know what this is kind of like? This is kind of like an, like an American girl book. <laughs> We're learning about like customs of the era, like Samantha Parkington. For example, sir, may I ask you, ma'am, would you please be so kind to read me another bedtime story and so on? It's terribly formal. Mother says it's due to your father's new position. The only person I can talk normal to is Elsa the cook. Anyway, I would really like to know what a counselor of commerce is. Elsa doesn't know either. She says it's a kind of high and mighty person but for me he's still my daddy okay that's elsa she has red hair and like very intense red freckles and she's waving around like a meat mallet <laughs> at these mustachioed moving men beautiful little blue and white kitchen scene it's so cute sweet little orange cat cute cupboard you can see inside that the door is really open we have some mugs stored in there lovely and a blue and brown little like kitchen dinette set for breakfast, casual eating in the kitchen with Elsa. What was she eating? What is Vicky eating? Toast and jelly and chocolate milk. That's a lot of sugar. All right, we continue. Today, in front of our house, there was a lot of excitement Right in the middle of our beautiful living room furniture, which was ready to be moved, there was a big green puffing and smoking motor on wheels, around which was a crowd forming. An old lady was swinging her walking stick excitedly in the air and yelling, What is that thing? Remember her from the cover? It's not a walking stick, it's a parasol, but, you know, Vicky's kind of dumb, so it's fine. Uh, my father, who was outside 
was wearing a tailcoat and top hat, tried to calm her down. I guess that's the father in this purple and pink, like, Easter bunny <laughs> suit. So this is her father speaking now. But lady, I assure you this highly modern vehicle is totally safe. What frightens you, madame, is the motor. Just imagine it has the power of 10 horses. 10? <laughs> Ten horses? You killer! <laughs> you murderer! Her voice cracked because of the excitement. She obviously thought the horses were locked inside the motor? Why are these people so stupid? <laughs> you can't fit ten horses inside of a car motor. Think about it, madame. <laughs> the crowd of people laughed. Oh, everyone knows she's dumb. The old lady had never seen an automobile before. She finally started to calm down when the driver shut his motor off and the smoke dissolved. Now even the children dared to come out from behind the advertising billboard. Excellent technology, my father said. This is the way of the future. Ooh. It's the industrial revolution. Times are changing. Okay. Get with it or be left behind. So... There's the truck. You can see it has like a hand crank. I guess that trucks used to have that. Um, there's a shipping crate and a, like a dolly to get that in there. And this guy's dressed in all brown. He works for Transport Union. It seems like these round things, what I couldn't identify on the cover, is like a, basically like a billboard. I don't know why it's circular. Of course, my family and I already knew about the automobiles from our visit to the city. There are several of them there. I do not know why my father prefers to travel in a carriage, but to be honest with you, I do too. I'd rather have real horses than a 10 horsepower motor. But my love for horses almost cost me life. <laughs> my life. This is how it happened. Finally, we're going to find out about Vicky's near-death experience. We were on our way to our new home in the carriage because my father didn't want anyone to steal the honor of presenting our home to his family. At least that's how he explained it. What a dick. This family sounds horrible and <laughs> very annoying. Boy, was I excited. More excitement. I had never seen it before. During the whole trip, I was hopping all over the cushion of my carriage seat. Suddenly, the carriage stopped in front of a huge house. That one? I asked. My father nodded. I was speechless. At first I thought it was a castle. Okay. At least it looked that big to me. It even has two balconies. How elegant and fascinating, <laughs> my mother said. I can't take my eyes off it. I was so excited that I leaped from the carriage into the street and hugged one of our dapple gray horses. So there's the dapple gray horse duo down there. They're cut in half by this page divide, but there's Vicky. She's hopping out of the carriage, and there's mother and father, and Vicky's about to get almost killed. Oh, Lord. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> then I noticed a boy. He was wearing a white sailor suit. Um, you mean a blue sailor suit? Vicky needs to learn her colors. He was wearing a white sailor suit and was standing by a lantern. Do you live here? He asked me bashfully. Yes, I answered, and I still can't believe it. It is the prettiest house <laughs> around and the biggest. Okay, my parents call it the new townhouse. And what is your name? I asked him. Peter, he said proudly. I live over there, pointing to a house across the street. Then that's when it happened. Suddenly, a truck came racing around the corner and was headed directly towards the horses and carriage. We were all scared to death, especially our two dapple gray horses. There's that term again, dapple gray. They rose on their hind legs and kicked their front legs. The horses were blind with fright, and they wanted to bolt. Right over my head, the horse ho hooves were kicking in the air. I was scared stiff. Suddenly, someone grabbed me from behind and pulled me to safety. It was Peter. He saved my life, and he almost got hurt himself in doing so. What a hero. 
My child, my poor child, my mother cried. Are you hurt? I didn't understand the danger then, but both Peter and I were unharmed. Boy, Peter, I said. That was close. You bet, he said. To be continued. So Peter saved her life, sort of. Here's the horses rearing up. I guess you can actually prop them up on their stiff tails. Aren't these horses funny looking? They're so skinty. Skinny little narrow horses <laughs> that are like all head and all tail. Um, hmm, all right. The horse master has got this long curved whip, which is wild. To be continued indeed. So that's the back of it. Playmobil, Vicky, mother, father, somebody in a little baby carriage. Dear children, if you liked the story, then stand up and cheer <laughs> because soon part two will appear with a new adventure out of Vicky's life. For more information, ask your local toy store. How in the hell am I gonna get part two of this? Cause I need to know what happens next. I wanna know about Charlotte and how she speaks French. And I wanna know about this pompous dad and this excited, <laughs> old lady in this blue white sailor suit hero and the whole deal and then we have photos of the some of the pieces you know some of the sets the actual pieces and then also the exteriors of the boxes so you can kind of know if you're going into the toy store what you're looking for these gorgeous gorgeous kind of hot pink like barbie pink boxes all right so there's the back side. We get to see the interior of the mansion. It's sort of sparsely furnished. We're moving in, don't forget. Part of the furniture is still outside. Lots of people in the house, really, they have so many people that work for them, or I don't really know what's going on. There's like a lot of adults just milling around in this house. <laughs> That's you, by the way, and you're assisting with the move-in, unpaid. Maybe, I guess you're like an intern. So text up here says, in so that you, girls and boys, love that, can play after the story, we have enclosed a few ideas. Very helpful. We wish you lots of fun with Vicky's lovely family and her adventures. That would be lots of fun. I love this. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, I don't know, they... Playmobil always is like so good at what they do. They're very good at producing these beautiful catalogs and also very good at convincing you to sort of get different components to build up a story. Very smart to like, not only are you getting the dollhouse and the things that go in the dollhouse, you need the moving crew because you're recreating Vicky's move-in story. Also, you need the horse and buggy thing because you gotta have Vicky get clomped to death by those horses. All of these other external kind of sets you need all of them because you're worth it and you want to recreate the story. Genius. Okay, last page here. Here's the whole, uh, the whole line, or a lot of the line anyway. 1990, available summer, 1990. Very beautifully arranged, all stacked up in these very fine little white boxes. So what do we have here? We have, you know, the crew, Vicky and her family. We have a housekeeper and some other child and then a baby. We have someone who's delivering mm, like a giant jug of booze, probably wine, I think, for, uh, <laughs> for Governess Charlotte so she can chill out. Uh, let's see, there's a musical parrot, like, what is that called? Organ grinder, right? They like play music. It shows music notes to indicate that it makes actual music sounds. There's a royal kind of English guard thing right here with the little house that they stand in. Children on stilts, children pushing around a pumpkin in a, in a, <laughs> a wagon. A flower salesman on a cute little bike. That's cute. Photographer. You know, the basics of the 
interior rooms, kitchen, living room, and bedroom. And then on this side, you know, we just keep going. There's that cylindrical advertising column thing, sort of a city street crew milling about. This piano, which plays music. I had that piano for sure because it definitely played music. It plays, what does it play? What is the one that goes like it plays that um lovely that also has the wonderful addition of this weird bust which is like just a playmobil person head but it's all white and a bust torso with like a white wig isn't that great there's the uh, elderly excited woman with her parasol there's like a Mm. <laughs> a man drinking something out of a bottle on a park bench and he has like a little sack and a stick so it's implying that he is you know perhaps homeless he's being bothered by this uh police officer with a giant sword so that's fun and you can buy the gate to go around the house if you have enough space i mean i can't even imagine i know this house is like humongous so to have the whole gate that goes around it is like quite a quite an investment in space there's a light up street lamp spectacular okay on the back it is this a wraparound image from the front no it's not it's its own little thing okay we get a better look at that paper tree item which is pretty cool you can actually see that it is it's, it's definitely paper and it's folded, sort of like cut and folded to stand up on its own. So it's not just flat, it has like a bit of a dimension to it. I just think that's so cool. And yeah, some people we've seen them before now at this point, the flower salesman, the uh, police officer with a giant sword, the stick and hoop boy. There's a little guitar player, very uh, vibrant city this is. And at the bottom, so great, Playmobil, the good old days. Remember the good old days? <laughs> 1903, the good old days. There's a illustration, not a photo, of mom and dad. No, wait, ma'am and sir, excuse me, and Vicky holding some flowers and isn't that lovely? And isn't this cute? There's a little text down here that says, if you have any ideas or suggestions for new items, then please write us. Many of the Playmobil products have come from ideas sent to us by our Playmobil fans. I had no idea that that was like a thing that they did. I wonder who suggested this, probably Vicky herself. You know, she's so into her story. Oh, <laughs> do you wanna come over here? I got a cat. Do you wanna come over here, hon? He came. <laughs> I knew he'd come eventually. There he is. Can you see? Hello. Oh, he's so sweet. He's a little orange cat. Oh, we love him. Okay, so maybe you'll see him better in the future. <laughs> oh, thank you for coming on camera for a minute. All right. Uh, well, uh, sorry. Let me <laughs> refocus. Okay, so there you have it the Playmobil catalog from 1990. If you liked this uh, video, give it a like. It really helps me out if you do. If you want to, I don't know, if you want me to try to track down more Vicky Diary stuff, I can give it a shot. Um, it was definitely fun to look at specifically this era and this like dollhouse Victorian mansion focus since this is like the thing that I grew up on most closely and most like lovingly so that was nice to revisit oh <laughs> jeez okay <laughs> uh i will see you all next week oh boy i will see you all next week with another new video so until then take care <laughs>